When the image of a given country is so vivid, when there are so many stereotypes about it, I just gotta see it with my own eyes. Who's there behind me? Who's there behind me? What a ba -ba -ba. Oh yeah, like this is so iconic. And now you see it, not on a photo, not on a poster or something, it's like immediately smile. Okay, I'll be honest. My excitement was pretty high once I set my foot on the soil of one of the most famous cities in the world. Paris. Paris is huge, but not in terms of the territory it occupies. Simply the most iconic spots and streets are spacious enough to support the landing of a goddamn Boeing 747. It's also pretty busy. Wow, that was a ride. So far the most hardcore city when it comes to riding. Like Paris? Try to cycle here through the city in the rush hours like now. Oh my god. Not far from the city center, there is a huge park slash forest with the area fully dedicated to serving pleasure to men. Police doesn't seem to bother. Hmm, France has always been liberal when it comes to sex. Probably you're wondering if the rumors of France being taken over by immigrants are true. Well, there are some cities where the problem indeed exists, like Bordeaux, which looks like one big slum and as a white person you feel like an unwelcome stranger there, but in majority they blended in the society. At night Paris shows off its cultural face. I just have not been let into Louvre. Guards didn't want to let me in because they decided that my face cover is not valid. I argued with them on the technical aspect of a proper mask, which they clearly had no clue about. They treated me like a trash. So... I found the nearest French supermarket, stole a pack of masks, put one on my face, entered the Louvre, and once I passed the malicious guard, I threw it away and put my own face cover. Do I have to mention that literally no one inside the Louvre had any problems with my masks whatsoever? Check out this place. It's a city, a mountain, and an island in the same time. Wait, to live in there, that must be extremely awful. It's like one of the coolest uh, cities in the world. Looks like a small kingdom. Under a high tide, it gets fully cut off from the land. Officially the worst place to live in the world. I'm supposed to enjoy the city. I'm running away from here. I'll come back maybe someday. But typical tourist destinations won't let you experience the adventure. So I turned off the beaten track, obviously. The place I'm going to is on a wild private land, and you really have to get dirty to find it. For the last jump to do, there's just mud, and you don't know where the ground is. Ah, made it. Okay, I made it. And this is what I wanted to show you. Check it out. Whoa! Okay. Okay, so it's officially impossible to do by walking through the river. The mud gets deeper and deeper. Literally, the mud is so deep that it sucks you in like a quicksand. I made it to the house. It's possible. The current's not that bad. It, it's really bad in around the house. One of the windows, I managed to open it. The first one. So, the only thing I have to do is to put this phone somewhere. I don't want to put it inside the pocket to drown it. I managed to keep my head above the water, so maybe I'll put it in my mouth.
This window. It rather looks more like a not a regular house, but I don't know, some factory. I honestly don't know if this place wasn't made for purpose of drowning it because I don't see what what would it be. And I gotta admit that I was tricked. I read a story somewhere on the internet that some rich dude built a house nearby the Loire River, and this house was swallowed by the flood. I thought that it would be super interesting to see how Mother Nature deals with human creation, but once I saw it, I instantly searched the internet for verification, and it turned out that it's just an installation art. The building was built this way on purpose. Hmm, well, uh, at least I can surely say that I'm one of the very few people that has ever been inside the house. <sighs> Hooray, we got a rainbow! But actually, the news are pretty bad. I'm at the park in Puy de Fall. Yeah, that's that's my pronunciation of it. Um, and unluckily, the big show in the night that that like have all these music, fountains, and, and like this great show, amazing. Like, I I think that's maybe the best in the world right now. And uh, due to coronavirus, the seats are cut by half. And uh, I was not able to enter today and the lady told me that it's like so many people want to watch it that it's basically booked one year before but I really thought it's gonna be different but you know there is no fence that I can jump over okay here it is maybe I'll be able to get in because so many people so many guards Black. Whew, believe me, to get there was a half hour James Bond mission. This place is super heavily guarded. I don't have more footage of getting through the backstage because it was too dark, too risky and I was in a rush, but it was crazy. involved climbing many high walls and fences, breaking through the bush, climbing trees and roofs of buildings, sneaking behind the changing rooms, and obviously peeking inside, they are playing right cat and with guards, avoiding CCTV cameras, and uh, pretending to be a part of the crew. Well, we got so I am here, hiding in the bush, on the stage, among the actors, literally inside the action.
yeah, it was freaking awesome experience. And I was able to see the whole machinery and the enormous effort and preparations behind this amazing show. Heads off. Okay, it's done. Now I gotta get out of here somehow. <laughs> wow, that was 10 out of 10. Epic, epic, absolutely epic. I'm literally walking among the employees. I was walking behind, like, and behind the curtains, and I saw people uh, dressing up, maintaining horses. I was walking on the roofs of their cloakrooms. Because the show itself is just jaw-dropping. So anyone who's watching this, when you're in France next time, you have to visit Puy de Fall Park. Next awesome thing is the Milao Viaduct. You really can't get your eyes on it so that you end up hitting the curb and busting your wheel. Hmm. Morning, and uh, luckily the garage nearby told me that they have uh, probably a spare rim uh, of the same size, and they're gonna switch it in two hours. Oh, that's what I was looking for. It appeared that someone has already crashed it. Okay, I managed to get a rim and tire seems to be okay. Uh, this mix mistake costed me half day of travel and 50 euros. But as I was forced to see the Milao giant during the day, I was able to fully appreciate its beauty. Damn, my fear of heights would never let me drive through it. You carry on! That's what I'm talking about! And we got to the famous French Riviera, Azure Coast, with its fancy ass cities for bourgeoisie. You can hear the police in the background calling me. Pavement. They decide to stop me because I was looking too poor and they thought I'm some kind of a burglar or a homeless. And they let me go uh, when I showed them my Samsung S20 credit card and the keys to the car. Ridiculous. I'm really gonna have a hard time enjoying the major uh, coast of France. Damn it, it's grey as hell, windy, rainy. And the streets are empty. What the hell? Wow! I think some kind of a storm is coming. You see? Khan is preparing for for the worst today. That guy is fighting with time. Enough of sightseeing of today, and I think I gotta get out of here because I don't know if it's gonna be any better tomorrow. Sorry! And I was extremely lucky that I made this decision, as next day when I was already heading north to the Alps, I've got a couple of messages from my family and friends warning me about heavy floods and mud avalanches on French and Italian coast. Phew!
just arrived at the location of the starting point of the trail. And I'll be going to certain places that I really want to show you and I really want to get there. So far you don't see much, but I promise the view is going to be beautiful. The place we are going to is as usual off the trail and requires a bit of dangerous climb. I almost did not make it there. The path is not marked in any way and at some point I reached the inclimbable wall. I didn't know where I am and I even fly my drone to see if I'm going the right way, but it didn't help at all. Plus the worst, my fear of heights triggered. And in the moment I decided to turn back, two guys emerged like from nowhere and show me where to go. Wow, super cool! It was like a gift from heaven. I see you, I see you. Wow, what a finish. Thank you. Thank you, you showed me the path. I didn't know it's here. Thanks a lot. Wow. I was standing in there on this rock and I just made like five meters in here and the arc already disappeared. It's not visible at all from here and uh, it makes this place so fine. You know, they say there are only two facts in the world, death and taxes. I would add the third one, descending is always more difficult than ascending. Officially, I made it back to the forest. Bang! I'm safe. I didn't die. And I'm so happy. Woo and for the goodbye, a couple of aerial shots of this ridiculous and beautiful place. Thank you, friends. You have been a great adventure. But I cannot wait for the next country. Amazing Spain!